When using cement, you want to use a respirator mask, some goggles, some gloves, just to keep it off. You get in the crappiest clothes that you have, like I have here. We're going to mix it uh, two parts of gravel to one part Portland cement. You can do like half and half for this because we want it to be really strong. Now I'm going to be mixing this by hand. I do own a cement mixer. I have a, um, a Red Lion cement mixer that I picked up at Lowe's. Very good little cement mixer. I actually have mixed uh, 500,000 pounds of cement with it over the past two years and built a lot of stuff. I'll have pictures to prove it in future videos, but for now, we're just going to be mixing this by hand because we don't need a whole lot for this. We're going to be filling this up, basically making a mold. This is a 94 pound bag of Portland cement. This is the Quick Right brand. You can use pre-mix if you want, but it takes a lot longer to harden it. This stuff you can like mix it like one to one with what you're doing and you get a really, really strong concrete. We're using the recycled crushed concrete from the recycling place close to us and it's basically broken up concrete pieces so it mixes fantastic with this stuff. Here we go. It's good to do this in the evening time. Let it set overnight. You don't want the sun on it because the sun will uh, dry your concrete too fast and you'll get cracks. It's best to wet your project down as much as you can once it starts to get a nice hardness to it. Wait till it gets like hard, almost hard to the touch and keep wetting it. That makes your concrete set stronger. All right, you can, you can see that I went ahead and lined the outside of this with plastic. You want to make sure that um, the cement does not get behind this. It won't. The weight's going to push it out. This is going to give you a ring to pull out so that way you can uh, not be... If you're trapped up under the rim of this container, you're going to have to break the concrete up or it's going to be there forever. You, you want your concrete to be just a little bit runny for this, that way it sticks nice to the bottom. I'm using a silver pan because the weights, you just pour it right in the center and you go at it. Ah. Ah. Eh. Ah, there we go. That's pretty much it. I'm just going to level this out and you can see the ring holding all the concrete in place and uh, it's a big step nice it's okay to have it kind of wet you want it kind of watery because that's gonna fit your mold the best and if you tap this you're gonna get some air bubbles to come up now we're gonna just let this set up overnight I'm gonna come out water it and we're probably gonna pull it out around four o'clock tomorrow you can see that the uh, concrete's hardened it sat for about two days one thing you want to be sure that you do is pull these plastic spacers out when this is kind of like a soft, well, a firm mud, you don't want this, you don't want to try to pull them out when it's completely hard like this or you're going to have a heck of a time with it. You should wait 48 hours before you pop this out of there. The rim spacers, you should pull those out after about 24 hours when this is like that soft but firm mud that I was telling you about. If you live in areas with really low humidity, you want to wet this periodically throughout the day. You want to do this where it's not out in the sun because the sun will crack this. It'll dry it out too fast. Never put a fan or try to hyper dry it that way. It doesn't, all it does is make this real brittle. By adding water to this, it makes the concrete stronger. So what we're going to do is over the next day, we're going to just wet this with the hose and let it sit. The next step is to get into some clothes that you don't mind ruining that's going to protect you because we're going to be dealing with some fiberglass. We're going to grind this down. I have 80 grit sandpaper on my grinder and we're going to gradually work this down into a really smooth polish finish. You don't have to do this step but it does make the interior of your parabolic shape a lot smoother. Alright, so you should have something that ends up looking like that. It should have kind of a shiny glaze to it. What this is going to do is this, gonna, this is going to seal a lot of the pores of the concrete. So it's going to make make it a lot, a lot easier to work with. Because popping the mold off on a parabolic shape is very difficult to do. It's probably the hardest part of the entire process. A little bit of this spray supposedly goes a long way. And it really does. But for the first time treating this, you want to put a lot on. And you want to make sure that it sinks in good. Then after we do that, we're going to get a buffer or we can just use a rag. We're going to try to rub it in as good as we can. Then we're going to follow up with regular candle wax, which is also paraffin. 
we're going to be using that to try to get a nice glaze on this because the more wax you have between this piece of concrete and your fiberglass resin the lot easier it's going to be to pop off the mold you just don't want clumps because that's going to show through in the pattern so you want it to be a nice smooth waxy finish This is just a $1 paraffin wax. What you're going to want to do is take, um, you can melt this. This is actually going to melt to be clear. Pour it into something and then have a nice block that you can rub on. The other way, so just take a screwdriver, dig in there, put the wax on there, and then just start rubbing it around. We're going to be mixing our polyester resin with this uh, MEK peroxide. This stuff makes this stuff is technically considered the hardener. Now I have some rubber gloves on that I'm going to be throwing throwing away. This brush, it's going to become trash. The container I pour it in, it's going to become trash as well. I have a charcoal respirator mask, which is helpful, but you want to do this outside. I've seen guys in auto shops do this stuff inside, and I truthfully cannot understand how it's possible to do it inside. The smell is just overwhelming the fumes that this puts off so you want to do it outside well ventilated area etc the brush becomes a throwaway item we're gonna mix our resin I like to mix it just a little bit lighter with this because what happens is it'll start to gel up towards the end of the process so it takes a couple of extra hours to harden but you know just follow the directions of whatever whatever resin that you have the fiberglass that I use is pretty interesting it's actually a uh, loose fiber material you can see that you can pull pieces of it off just like that I like using this because putting strips on there you end up with the same problem that you have when you line a dish you get folds and bends by tearing little sections off you'll see me pad this down what the fiberglass does is it creates a surface for the resin to sit in so you can layer thicker layers of resin without it it would just run off and you'd have a very thin layer that would be virtually impossible to to use. This stuff is not very strong, but when it's filled with resin, you end up with a very sturdy resin surf structure. Okay, this is pretty much uh, done. This is going to have to cure for probably 12 to 24 hours, depending on how much hardener you use. Um, all resins are a little bit different, and uh, when this hardens, we, we let this overlap around the edges. We're going to be taking our table saw and cutting that off to get like a nice circle out of it. If you don't want to if you don't have a table saw, you don't have a means of trimming it off, go as close as you can to the edge. You want to build the edges up thick around there because that's going to be the weakest point. The center will naturally have a little bit more resin. Even though everything has a tendency to go down, you're going to just naturally put more in the middle. The outer edges are what's difficult. You want to make sure that you get as few air bubbles as you can under there. It's pretty easy to do. You just dab them out with the brush. Once this starts to harden, you got to let this completely harden before you pull it off. Okay, we're back, and this is hardened up pretty good. So what I'm going to do is see how well that release agent works. So we're going to pull this off. You're gonna see like white areas lift up under there. I rotate that. And you can see where it's releasing. There we go. That stuff worked good. There you have a parabolic dish. Completely done. We're gonna let this harden up a little bit, then we're gonna sand the inside, and we're gonna trim around the edges. So that took about 12 hours to do. So you can see that we got the nice shape. We're good to go and it's a little bit of resin left behind but we'll just sand that down and wax it up.